So we are live and streaming today on Dawn of a New Era podcast, and we are joined by Kyle Kaplanis, uh, who is in Canada, one of our many podcast guests. And this is a topic that I know everybody is just eager to find out about because I have just made my TikTok debut or debut. And um, Kyle um, has, um, well, he's going to be talking to us about all things TikTok for business, which is going to be super exciting because... To be honest, I think a lot of people are quite reticent and you have a podcast, an agency um, in the world of TikTok. And I think the first thing that we've just got to handle is should brands and businesses be thinking about this? Because I get asked all the time. I mean, I, I work in digital. So, you know, we're teaching like social media channels. You know, we're always telling people about the new thing. But mm -hmm. where does TikTok sit in 2021 for brands and businesses? <laughs> the thing is they sat for brands and businesses in 2020 yes. <laughs> so if you're, if you're coming to there now um the, the time is yesterday so mm. you know for brands and businesses being on there there's many things a lot of people have the number one misconception with tiktok typically is mm, i don't know there's dancing teens lip syncing that's all it is how yeah. is my business going to be seen there in the right way and they're like oh i don't target gen z so it's pointless well guess what this is crazy interesting real life facts since the pandemic kicked off mm. it has really driven a mass audience of the older demographic i mean we are seeing gen x and boomers coming there like crazy and really enjoying their time so over 37 percent of the app is actually over the age of 35 years old which yeah. is actually older than me. I'm 34. So that means nearly, you know, 40% of the entire app is over the age of 35. So if you think of that, right there alone should be enough to get you started on the platform at, to be thinking about how can I add TikTok to my marketing strategy? So that like, there's just so many opportunities there. So the reason why it's working super well is because of the authenticity. So sometimes people think, oh, that word's so overused, but really it, it's, that's where we are. We're all about relatability and authentic, yeah. like being authentic and being able to bring your brand into that light of showcasing it in kind of a, a fun way or maybe behind the scenes is where people are now taking that next level with their business. So another thing I can say is this is on Platforms like most people promote on Facebook or Instagram, right, for their businesses, but mm -hmm. they have to pay. Like you pay yeah. a ton of money for mm -hmm. advertising to get any reach. On TikTok, there's, there is ways to be able to add, um, to pay for ads on there, which are relatively inexpensive and they work really well. I've talked to a lot of businesses who've had more success with their first month of paying for ads on TikTok than it than they have in the last 10 years on Facebook. Um, mm. But the actual organic reach for zero paying any money is absolutely insane. You could probably, you could return on investment like with zero money down and, mm. and be able to increase your sales by so much because of the fact that the, the algorithm kicks your videos out to the right people so that algorithm is like so sticky like it's so tight that it's going to find the right people and to bring it to your to your business so you can get feedback instant instantly you can ask your audience questions right away and get the right things that you need to know for your business so those are just See, like some one thing I, things. I love with it because i because i am a linkedin fan right so right. i know that i love linkedin because free reach free engagement this is why TikTok started to kind of really feature in my thoughts because it's it's new, well, newer than other platforms, less saturated. And the, the amazing thing was, is just by putting videos on, um, how quickly, like literally how quickly you could get, not just engagement, but followers. And mm -hmm. I know uh, lots of brands and businesses who have jumped onto TikTok and within a month, like you say, um, are getting a huge amount of visibility, huge amount of presence, huge amount of engagement and people taking action. Right. So 
The thing is, is that if you are already doing content and it's working on other platforms, then like, why couldn't it work on TikTok? And yeah. I think the thing that people struggle with is it, it's, as you say, that they're seeing these entertaining dances and things like that. But surely it's a bit like other you know networks you once you get the right network of people mm -hmm. you're cancelling out the white noise you know you, you're building your audience and absolutely what's your biggest um kind of tip for somebody who's like right do you know what i've just got to go and do my first video what kind of content are you seeing brands and businesses just really flying with at the minute okay so before you start making content triple check make sure you've studied the platform because there's a, a ethics like a, a um sorry there's an etiquette right mm. to to video so on linkedin there's kind of a more of a professional kind of etiquette in, mm. a way, in a sense on tiktok you can still be that but you need to understand what the culture feels like within the platform that's really important or you will stand out and it will be pointless for you to even make it could be great content but it would be pointless so you have to really understand what does it look like when you're scrolling start searching up hashtags within your kind of market that you're you're looking to promote and see what other people are doing but brands that are doing a really good job right away is because they understand the culture and gear their marketing toward that culture so even even though it feels like a a, a gen z style culture that is the change that we're going into um as far as marketing goes we i think we're going to see that you know, it's kind of like when, when new people come in for businesses, when they start getting younger audiences in the culture of your business starts changing a bit and you have to keep up with the times. Right. So that's yeah. where we're, that's where we are. So that's, that's the number one thing, but the, the things that businesses can do is really take TikTok as a new approach. So you want to give educational stuff like education is probably the number one thing that you can you can do on the app so whatever your brand or business is figure out a way that you can teach something from it for your audience so what is your goals within them are you looking to gain more customers or are you looking to just educate about the services that you have anything like that that's when you can come up with like a goal in place to be able to put some educational series out there. And the videos are short, so you can make a ton of content based off of like one thing in your business or go back and see any maybe YouTube content or any LinkedIn content that you've ever made and then redo it, but break it down into smaller steps, like 30 second videos. Yeah. Brands that are having a great time though is showing like the behind the scenes of their business or telling their that, story. Though, we want yeah, to get into the, the brand's yeah. nitty gritty. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, so, I mean, it's like reality TV, isn't it? Really? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, like, I mean, my theory is this, is that for so long, we've been inundated with ads. We've just been, everything's been so commercial, right? So what we're looking to do now is we want to see what is your brand even about? Like quit hiding behind your product or your service and show us who you are as a human being and relate mm -hmm. to us on a human night, like human level. So my biggest theory is like to humanize your brand, you will then take it to the next level. And the thing is, even these largest, large, large companies, they need to start doing it too, or they can eventually just be faded out. And I know it sounds crazy, but I've been seeing it slowly. I mean, there's just been so many companies that are losing traction and there's tons of small businesses just blowing up right now because of that authentic authenticity and another tip is this like if you are using social medias most of us as a business we're tapped into every market right mm. so use tiktok as a new approach to add something different so all your social media should be a different flavor per se so because if you have somebody who follows you on let's say instagram and they come to your tiktok and it's the exact same content like there's there's no point for them to co and transfer to these. Yeah, there's other no platforms. differentiator. Yeah, mm -hmm. so each platform should have a little bit of a new piece of information that your followers or people that are listening to you can travel to these different sites to be able to gain more knowledge about who you are or about your brand or business. So TikTok, just use it as a whole new approach. You have to kind of just let everything go. And have fun with it. So you're, you know, you're based in the UK. Mm -hmm. You know Ryanair. You probably yeah. heard of the airline. 
my favorite business account on the app is Ryanair. They're yeah, I just want Air to be scrolling through that. They're, yeah. they're hilarious. Um, some businesses looking at that account would be like, oh, I don't think we could do this. You mm. can. You have to just be a little bit unique, uh, have fun with it. And I think mm. a lot of people are afraid of that. But you could have a ton of fun with it. That's a great account to search and see how they've learned the culture of the app. And if you go through the comments, I mean, you'll see people all over the world. For one, there's tons of U.S.-based people saying, please, like, please bring your airline to the U.S., please. Um, all the U.K. people are saying, you know, once we could travel a lot more, the only airline I'll be using is Ryanair from now on, no matter what, even if you guys I mean, weren't the cheapest. Huge brand massive. And tons brand of brand awareness. Yes. Massive. So it, it's just, um, you know, like when all these people travel to the U.K. and if they have to catch flight, they're going to be top of mind. They're going to think Ryanair because mm -hmm. of how much fun they've been associated. And to be involved in a brand, to be having, they get like 30,000 comments. That's a mm -hmm. big deal. Like naturally, organically, and people wanting to comment about your brand, that's what you want. Well, this is it. And you look at other platforms that they may be on and then they're not getting anything near that. And, you know, I think you were saying something that I'm, I am so talking about at the moment is that I'm all about social media where it's like forming this deeper connection, kind of really changing the, the status quo about social media. Because, we, you know, let's be honest, we have got a bit of social fatigue. We want to use social media in a way that we want to be entertained. You know, yeah. we want to learn something. We want to feel connected to that brand. And I think that's so important because so many people still are saying to me, Dawn, I, you know, I want to use these third party platforms. I want to create my content and post it any, everywhere. And it's like, no, stop, you know. What you had said there is exactly true. When you go onto a platform, you want to feel that it's authentic and true to that mm -hmm. platform and yeah. you know, not just one size fits all because it exactly. doesn't build that, that bond, does it? No, it, so it doesn't. When we were talking about just off air before, we were talking about podcasts and how TikTok can be used. Um, what's what, what are you seeing at the moment? Because you were telling me about a colleague of yours that had used this to like become the top 1% in podcasting. So I'm super interested in hearing about this. Yeah, it's actually a friend of mine. His name is Byron uh, Byron Young, and he's based in Australia. So mm -hmm. he started showcasing his podcast. So he does them in person. So he has a little bit of a benefit there um, as far as having his guests in person. So he films it with two cameras, and the quality is a little bit nicer than you can get with us breaking this down. But it mm -hmm. is possible because I do it on my account. But sure. basically what he did was thinking, okay, so most people are using TikTok. They're doing the trends, they're um, doing dancing or whatever. So he was like, okay, well, I'm going to try this out with my podcast and not do any trends, just literally focus on 100% my podcast mm. and talking about that. So he he does, and what he does is he takes the whole podcast and he can break it down into lots of videos because, mm. you know, sometimes your podcasts are 30 to 45 minutes. And if you think about that with TikTok being, you know, 30 second to, to a minute videos, you mm. can get a ton of clips. So yeah. you basically could just break it down. Sorry. Um, you could break it down into little little snippets. So that's what he did. And then he said his number one tip is to find a good title of to kind of catch them in. So you put on the screen something really exciting to put on the um, – like to get their attention with text. And mm -hmm. then he shared it. So what what happened, though, was he went from – you know, just being a standard podcast where you're starting out because it, it is a grind. Like the mm -hmm. podcast life is a grind. You have to I'm with you. really, with you, you have to work at it. <laughs> we started ours <laughs> about the same time, didn't we, last yeah, year? So you, you did. You were exactly. almost always July. Yep. Yeah. So you, re you, re it's a real, real grind. Um, but he was able to go to number seven in entrepreneur in the whole world. Um, being the one percent had hundreds and thousands of downloads just because of his TikTok. The number one thing that he said converted the most listeners was not a clip actually from his podcast, but a story of why he's doing the podcast. So that right Are there you? tells me what is, what is the thing people need to be focusing on for brands, regardless if it's podcasts or anything is your story. Who are you going to touch that day? Because if you can make that human connection, you're going to get sales. You're going to build that trust, that credibility within your brand. So he said that it, he said it wasn't his biggest viewed video, but it converted to the most. And that's what mm. got him to the number seven. And yeah, so, 
Yeah, and you want, so you want cool. views, but you know, if, if they, they're not taking any action, then you know, it, exactly, what's the point? <laughs> exactly. So, like people get caught up in thinking they need a ton of things to make an impact or or to have like have a new opportunity. And my number one thing is virality does not mean success. So it's all about who are you connecting with. I know people who have millions of followers who are not monetizing at all because they yeah. just are not creating the right audiences. They might have a ton of people, but they're not, they're just not doing good things. And then I've had people that have had less than 5,000 followers on TikTok literally make six figure incomes within their first few months on the app. And, or even I, I talked to one girl who had a hundred thousand followers and was able to make more money in her first month of her side hustle than she did for the whole year and was able to quit her nine to five and is now making six figure incomes. And she was like, Oh my God, like I couldn't even imagine. So it, you do not need these big, big numbers. Virality mean, does not mean success. So never focus on, on that. Yeah. And I think this is the comfort thing to, to, to hear because, you know, it's all about quality, not quantity. And we, you know, and I, and I think people are brands and businesses and, and the people within those teams, you know, are kind of a little bit burnt out. We were talking about this social fatigue before that, you know, creating content all the time, coming up with a new concept that I think you just kind of have to stop, take a step back, as you say, and think about like, why are we doing this? Like, what is the purpose and what is it we're trying to do? Mm -hmm. and, I think research has got to be the key, hasn't it? You know, in terms of, you know, if you're looking to become influential, not necessarily, you know, an influencer in, in you know, the Instagram terms necessarily, but influential in your niche and market. Um, there was a question I was asked the other day, and I said, I will definitely bring this to Kyle, which was um, in the coming years, obviously we've got things like TikTok, we've got Clubhouse, you know, where do we see social networking going? What, what What's our future prediction? So I, I think the cool thing is I, I love Clubhouse and, and their their ideas there because it's like in, you can have a conversation with somebody instantly. Mm -hmm. But I do believe video is always going to be king because, yes, you can have a conversation, but seeing a face mm -hmm. is probably way more important than just a voice. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, there might even be some sort of platform where you can go into almost like big groups where it's, it's video as well. Um, that's where I think like we're always striving for that human connection. So the closer mm. we can get to that. So I believe yes, clubhouse or something like that will definitely stick around and it is great, but you still need to be focusing on video to reach that connection. Cause you can get in a room um, and, and without being able to speak, you can't be heard on a video. Yeah. You can be heard at any time because it just can stay out there. Um, and, and everything like that. So I really personally feel, and with all the attention spans, got, like getting shorter and shorter and shorter, I think short form content will be the future. And like, I'm, you know, I can't predict TikTok's going to be around for, for a long time. I personally believe it's going to be one of the ones that'll be stuck around kind of like a Facebook or whatnot in the years to come. So that's why I really truly believe that that's where people should be. Mm. We're seeing that even in the YouTube world, you know, YouTube's recommended length in video used to be like 10 to 15 minutes. And now they've shortened it down each year. It drops and drops. And now they're just at the eight minute mark. They say, don't make your videos any more than eight minutes or mm -hmm. you've lost your attention span. That's the kind of the cutoff point that they're starting to see people drop. Yeah, from, it's from all like three to five minutes at the moment seems to be the sweet spot and a lot of the new content that's going on there. Yeah. And then I, I was reading, um, Facebook has a science team, who knew? Um, I, I was reading an article and they were talking about kind of the power of video and what you say, you know, it, it's interesting because they're saying that even with three seconds, with the sound off, the the, the brand recall and the, then the message lift of that particular post or video or ad is just like a hundred percent higher than anything else, you know. Exactly. And three seconds will make uh, an impact on your brand. Exactly. So, you know, we know that video is going to be there. We know that about eighty percent of traffic at the moment on the internet is actually to video. So, mm -hmm. we need exactly. to be making more. But what good news? We're going to be making short, sweet, quick consumption pieces of content that you know you do on the fly. What's your sweet spot then on TikTok? How long are your videos generally? It, it, it really 
Depends. So I've had some really good viral success um, with videos that are just straight all the way to the 60 second mark. Mm -hmm. And then I've had a couple that do well within eight seconds. It, it depends. And like I said, it's, it's not really about the virality because sometimes the virality can come with the wrong audience as well. Like it, it got tapped into somebody like you triggered a whole market and you're like, Oh, great. This is not what I even intended for. <laughs> so yeah. it's not about that. It's about the right people. But I, I found the TikTok sweet spot is 15 seconds, depending yeah. on what you're doing. So TikTok just now launched a new feature. Uh, it's going to be rolled out slowly. I've started to see it on my For You page. I don't have access to do it myself. But TikTok has just added a three-minute video Ooh. limit. So what people are doing within that three minutes is fantastic, but yeah. you know, you have to make sure it's really entertaining to be able to continue on. I've only watched a few of them to the mm -hmm. end because they were really either educational because sometimes 60 seconds isn't enough to really drive in that point. Yeah. And get into a topic. Yeah. So it's a really good way to, to do that, but that's where I think is going to be the sweet spot. I think three minutes is going to be our max. Mm -hmm. Video yeah, length we, like, feature. You're covering three points or something, you're right. You know, that's like, you know, minute yeah. point. And then, you know, people are in a learning state then, aren't they? So it's, it's quite a different thing. You know, if you've grabbed someone's attention, they're, they're getting value from it. Why mm. wouldn't you watch three minutes? And we've yeah. seen this with Instagram, haven't we? You know, they started off short, you know, and then we've got IGTV. Um, what, what would you say if someone was looking at the moment, brand or business was like, right, I'm not on Instagram. I'm not on TikTok. What's going to be the quickest win? TikTok, hundred percent. Yeah, exactly. Like, it, it really is because it's just it's for one because of all these people transitioning over there. The, mm -hmm. You see, you hear it all day. Like Facebook, I feel like is just pff, dying. And, yeah. You know, people are leaving it. It's boring. It's it's not fun anymore. It's a lot like, of saturation in terms of content. Oh. And do you know what? I think groups still fine. You know, if you've got an engaged group, but do you know what? It's it's the smaller groups, the more quality. Nice hubs of people, not these like massive, massive groups that are doing mm -hmm. well. And I think this is it. People don't want to be in this massive group. They want to be in a community that's exactly. like that they're part of. Yep. It's all so about it's so the interesting. community. I mean, yeah. this is great news for marketers, isn't it? Because Oh my gosh, yes. I mean, you know, how, how well, I know you've grown some channels, like you did your daughter's channel and things like that. How quickly can somebody see like good growth on TikTok? Yeah, so um, somebody in particular that I had on 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 my podcast, his name is Law by Mike, so he's actually a lawyer. He's the number one followed lawyer now in the world. So wow. he went to TikTok and was able to grow to four million within thirty days. So yes, there's a massive <laughs> you can have oppor like crazy opportunity. So for instance, even my daughter who's at two point three million, she was able to grow to ten thousand quickly, and anybody can actually grow to those numbers fairly fast. If you're being yeah. consistent with it and, and showing good content, easy. There's accounts that have had a million followers from one video, their first video, which mm -hmm. is insane. I don't recommend that. It comes with a lot of responsibility and you're not prepared for, for that. I think slow growth is the best. So you can find that right community and get practice yeah. as you go. But the um, the amount of opportunity there is unlike any platform. You will never get that on Instagram. You will never ever get that on Facebook. That's for sure. Um, yeah. On YouTube, good luck. Only zero point zero one percent or something like that make it even to be seen per year. So they, yeah, that's like most almost like to use ads, right? Like one to two people actually can break through in that platform. So that's what I'm saying. Like good luck. There's a lot of people that are focusing on these platforms that are you know been around for a long time because they have kind of the credibility there and so they're a little bit afraid to be like oh I, I don't know about starting on TikTok because that's just not you know people are not talking about it in the business sense but they will be either you're going to be two people a follower that are going to do eventually what everybody else has been doing when they have their success or you can be that person that takes that risk and has a success that can tell those stories to those who are eventually going to follow that's my theory on that. It's kind of like Gary V in a sense where, you know, Gary V has been talking about TikTok for a, over a year now. Just, yeah. hey, you got to be there. And he's doing great stuff on that platform as well. So, 
Well, this is it. I mean, I think the thing with content now, the good news is for a lot of marketers that we know that we want to be doing less. We know that we want to be more purposeful with what we're doing. And I think the thing is with video is you don't have to have like professionally, you know, film and video. I mean, the, the power of these things, like, you know, you you know, you can do all sorts of, Bentley did the, one of their adverts entirely on an iPhone. And so yes. some people say, do you know what? I, I just don't think I can make video. W what would you say to those people? Because I, I guess a lot of people are excited, but they're still pulling back a little bit. Yes. And I think the number one reason that they are is because of Instagram and YouTube kind of screwed us up in a sense of what we think is, is, quality standards right mm. because there's you see a lot of these people who've broke through on those are just like oh my gosh you either have to look beautiful or you have to be like a supermodel especially on instagram yeah. you feel like that you're like oh, i'm not yeah. that person and then on youtube yeah. you're like oh my gosh these people are actually putting on full like tv series like yeah. full you know high production with camera crews and camera team to, you're like i can't afford that mm. yes you can because you have, most of us have a phone, right? Like mm -hmm. that is the only tool that you need to be able to have success. So there's people, you know, you get comfortable just making a few videos on a selfie. It's really important. So that's, I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of us are, are hiding behind our text, like posts. So meaning you're just like on LinkedIn, you're just making text posts or an image. And, and you're not go reaching out on video, it is really important to start getting used to that now because I think it, without that, your business can't thrive. Or sure. either that or you're going to have to find a team member who can can be there. Um, yeah, I mean, we all had to go live like initially, didn't we? And you know what? Once you realize you've done it three times and you've not died, it's kind of all right, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like anything, you know, the first time is always going to be a little bit nerve wracking. But you know what, when you, you start getting engagement, and, and then people start talking to you, you start getting a little bit of like a buzz and confidence behind it. But it, it's a matter of just having to step out. And it is tough sometimes. But mm -hmm. even by just, you know, doing interviews or something, first of all, to get that first time out um, is great. Dan's asked a question. Um, yes. Is there any advantage of having the founder being the face of the videos or a professional actor or famous TikTok star? Love that. That's a great question. I get that question a ton from brands or businesses. Here's my thing. Somebody that you hire per se, like a like a, a famous TikToker or a professional actor, they can never tell your business like you can because that is your baby, right? People can feel the authenticity. Typically when you see an actor or somebody on a channel, you 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 sense that ad like feel. Right. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel as organic unless that influencer that you're going to partner with loves your brand. Like they have to, yeah. they have to love it to have where to it feels genuinely natural. Yeah. So they, so they generally like could talk, if they could talk about it for free, then that's who you want. If not, I would suggest being the face. I think still you should be the face, even if you do use some people like that to just kind of help build, you know, boost you a little bit. There's a lot of founders and things like that that we've never, ever heard of. We hear of businesses and mm. you don't really hear of them, right? Like people in the industry that we know of, you know, Tesla, you think of Elon Musk right away. Some of these other businesses, you think of the brand, but who's the face? Who are the mm. person there, right? So that's that's what I was saying where even bigger brands are eventually could eventually die without bringing that mm. video uh, quality to them or learning who is that business? Who are the people there? So uh, we that's want to really... see the face behind it, but we want to see what they're about. Like, you know, not yeah. just like the mission and vision of the brand, but like, what do they stand for? Exactly. Because that's what we're buying into, aren't we? You know, it's it's people by people. And, you know, by building a relationship with the brand, it, it's the people and the team within it. Because I've seen lots of brands bringing forward some of their tech specialists, you know, panel. And that's the bit that we're fascinated about. We don't always just want to see the figure leader or head or leader in mm -hmm. it. We want to see the people. Yeah. So. If people want to go and find out, obviously, I, I hope people are going to go and check out TikTok generally. Um, but if they want to go and connect with you, Kyle, where can they find you? Where's the best place to connect? Um, you know, interesting enough, my number one connection place is LinkedIn. So definitely you could just find me on, on Kyle Kaplanis. I promote a ton of stuff. My daughter does too, Jade Vincent. You can find her on, on LinkedIn. Me and her are going to be doing another series 
about TikTok and business. Um, but you can connect with me over there. You can find me over on, on TikTok under Kyle Kaplanis. My channel is just all over the place, which is really cool because the whole niche down is not a thing mm -hmm. in that platform. You can just be you and share all your interests, which is really fun. Yeah. Um, so you can find me over there. Or, but but LinkedIn's the the number one place for sure um, to come connect with me, ask me questions, and my podcast. So if you're yeah. looking to, for for learning more about TikTok or how your brand can can get the reach there, or learning some success stories from people who have been there, you can check out my podcast at Biz Talk B I Z T O K. It's kind of play out words within the app, but you can find me on all the the podcast platforms. Oh, perfect. We've got one last question, Carl, before we love you and leave yeah. you. This, um, are any shopping centers, retail destinations using TikTok? Tons, tons. Yeah, I, I so, saw literally, uh, before I came on, I was scrolling through because it's kind of addictive. You kind of lose your life on TikTok. But <laughs> from a recent <laughs> point of view, I was kind of shocked how many. Is there oh, any yeah. that you stand out that Sue can go and yeah. have a look at? I mean, Sue, ch definitely check it out. So Walmart's playing a massive game right now um within tiktok i mean walmart owns asda i believe right like in the, in the uk so mm -hmm. very the same brand pretty much um is going to be relatively good they've had their very first online live shopping experience so they had creators wearing different clothes and you were able to shop on the live during so that's going to be a future thing e-commerce and, yeah, and lives and all that real it's time going to be massive it, it trust me it's coming faster than you think this is why i'm trying to tell brands get situated now especially if you are a retail brand or have products or services or, or like products get on there now because the e-commerce shopping ability is coming faster than we think we saw it with uh live there's a couple like store brands that are that are closed um mm -hmm. that are that are really standing out and having fun in the comment section pack sun is one i'm not sure if that brand is actually in the uk or not but it's a no, big us it's a big yeah. US brand. Um, it is, they're always, I see them in the comment section all the time, which is fun because people find that to be what there's a human here. Like you're actually yeah. interacting back with me. Yeah, yeah. So that's a really important thing too. Even if you're not making as much content, just having fun in comment sections and being able to be involved with those conversations really makes you feel more human as well and have that connection. But Sue, uh, I saw your, your name pop up there. Definitely just search up the brands that you know of in the retail market that mm. you're interested in or know about, see if they're there. You'd be surprised. I bet they are. Oh, see, I think this is it. I think there's a lot of people who have piqued their interest. So thank you so much for joining us on the today's podcast uh, episode. But I think also it, it makes it feel actually achievable. So, you know, I'm committing here that I am actually going to be doing TikTok now. And <laughs> I've said it out loud. <laughs> um, but do you know what? It just makes me realize how important it is. And do you know what? If we're doing video and things in other places and, and other content, that, that this is the quickest win. And, you know, if 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 I can kind of just start from zero, then why why the heck can no one else do it? You know, exactly. Everyone has the opportunity um, to get out there, and um, hopefully, um, some people will go and uh, take some of these tips and action them. Um, let Carl know how you're getting on. Um, we'll both be on LinkedIn, and obviously, if you're watching this or listening to this, um, let us know if there's any questions. So, um, any final word, Carl, to our audiences before we love you and leave you? Don't wait start your account today even if it's just creating an account and just let go have fun with it and put your first video out there that's that's the number one thing i can i can say so take action oh take perfect. Action. well thank you so much for joining us and uh, we will see everyone on on next week's episode so thank you very much take thank care you, Dan.